Hello everybody and welcome to another episode. In today's episode I'm going to show you how to remove the EGR valve along with the intake manifold and along with the throttle body from a Mercedes A-Class from the year 2008 and up. This car has an engine with the size 2.2 diesel and it has a problem with the throttle body, with the shutdown throttle body and I have to replace it and I also have to clean all the parts uh, including the EGR and the intake manifold from this car. The job uh, which you will have to do on this car is a little bit difficult. You will have to remove a lot of things, you will have to remove a lot of bolts and it's very difficult because the space is so small and you don't really have room to work with uh, the tools and you don't have room to work with all the bolts which you will have to remove. So it will be a little bit tricky. You will have to figure out the best ways which will help you to remove the entire uh, parts from this car and which will help you to make a good job and an easier job if you want to call it in this way. So as you can see right here I have my throttle body, I have the shutdown throttle body, depend on how you want to call it. it. This is brand new and I will have to replace it on this car and I decided guys to show you and to make a video and show you step by step what you have to do. I'm not going to talk uh, in every moment because the video is uh, so long and I'm going to fast forward it and I will let you guys see what I'm going to do and how I'm doing it because in this way probably it will help you in the future or it will make you and it will give you some ideas and how you have to do it and what uh, this job uh, it's uh, meaning and if you want to do this job it's better to watch this video because it's a little bit difficult and I don't recommend you to start this job if you can't finish it. So from here just follow what I'm doing. I'm going to remove the top uh, EGR cooling valve. I'm going to remove all the hoses. I'm going to remove the fuel filter. I'm going to remove the hoses from around the fuel filter and the mounting bracket from the fuel filter. And from here just follow what I'm doing because there is a lot of bolts and there is a lot of hoses which you have to remove and I want to tell you guys it's better to take some pictures before just to make sure that the bolts go in the right place, just to make sure that every hose is going in the right place and if you don't know where everything goes this is why I want to to take some pictures just to remember you where everything is installed because in this way you will know for sure that you will do a good job and you will not have any problems in the future. Here to remove the EGR cooling valve you have to remove I think uh, seven bolts. Uh, all of the bolts are easy to remove from the top but you'll have one right uh, underneath the cooling valve in the middle and you'll have to use some extensions. You'll have to use some extension along with the little mirror which will help you to see the bolt and which will help you to remove the bolt easier. It's a, li it's, um, a little difficult to remove this EGR cooling valve. It's right at the top of this engine but after you remove this one from there it's a little bit easier. After we remove the hoses, uh, be prepared because some of the coolant will came out, but that's not a problem because you will have to clean it later after you remove all the parts and make sure you have coolant uh, to put back in the engine after you're done with this job. So just take that in mind. And you'll have to use some special pliers which will help you to grab the clamps from the hoses and disconnect them because in this way you will be able to remove the hoses from the mounting brackets.
So as you can see, I removed all the hoses along with the fuel filter and the screws which are holding them mounted in place. And now this is where the little screw is holding the EGR cooling valve into its place. This is the extension which I'm using. And this one, it's a little bit difficult to remove. It took me a lot of time. And remember guys, this uh, video which I'm showing you right now, it's the entire process on how to do this job, but it's a uh, fast forwarding. So it's a uh, speed up, but uh, normally it took me about six hours to remove everything and to install everything back onto this car. So this is a complete day of work, depending on how much experience you have. But it's a little difficult and I don't recommend you guys, if you don't have the knowledge and the tools to do it, I don't recommend you guys to start doing it because probably you will screw up some things and you have more problems with the car So as you can see, I removed the EGR along with the fuel filter brackets and all the hoses from around it. This is how the EGR is looking, this is where it is stored. And if you want to remove it completely from the car, you'll have to look uh, um, in the back of the engine and I hope you all can see it. There is one bolt right there at the top. There is one 10mm uh, bolt which you'll have to remove and you'll have another one underneath but you can remove it from here. You'll have to go under the car and I will show you in a second which way and how I like to do it on this car because it's a little bit easier you won't have to remove a lot of things but after that you'll have to remove all of these hoses from around it as you can see the EGR is very clogged normally some people like to do it from this way like to remove the bolts from right here and separate the EGR from the mounting bracket but it uh, but it's also difficult in this way so what I like to do is to remove the entire EGR along with the mounting bracket from the engine 
and I will show you guys in a second how I'm going to do this. As you can see, this is how the EGR is looking and all the bolts from underneath. You probably, you will have to figure out the best way, which will help you to do it a little bit easier, but I like to show you guys my way and I think it's the best way possible to do it with the engine mounted onto the car. So just look uh, how the parts are installed. This is all the coolant which came out. This is the intake manifold and down there it's the throttle body which I'll have to remove later. So guys, if you want to remove the EGR, some people like to remove this uh, heat shield from under the engine and uh, remove it completely in order for you to create some space and reach the bolt. But it's also very difficult to remove this shield because it has some bolts underneath the engine and you won't have access to the bolts unless you remove other parts. So what I figured out is the best way to do it is to go right here under the transmission, under the engine. And as you can see, if you all can see right after there, there is the bolt which is holding the EGR mounting bracket mounted onto the engine. I already loosened, uh, loosened up a little bit the bolt and I had to use this tool. This is the tool which I used to remove it. This is a little extension along with the 8mm socket. And in this way, I figured out that it's a little bit easier to remove the bolt. And I also used a little bit uh, uh, minigun. And uh, in this way, the minigun helped me to remove the bolt a little bit faster. But it can be done in this way. You just have to take this time and after that, the EGR mounting bracket will came out from its place. Here, as you can see, it's a little bit difficult for me to put it with one hand, but if you are doing this with two hands, which uh, will normally help you do it a little bit faster, you will do the job just fine.
So right here, as all you can see, I removed everything which I had to remove from this engine, the EGR valve, the throttle body, the intake manifold, the EGR cooling, 
and this is how the engine is looking i'm going to clean the engine very good before installing the new parts and i'm going to clean also every part and make them like new this is how everything is going this is what you have to do you will have to figure out the best ways which will help you to remove all the parts because i didn't have time to explain you everything because everything was so difficult to do it those are all the bolts which are holding the intake manifold mounted onto the uh, mounted onto the engine those are all the bolts from the top you'll have to reach every bolt with some tools with some extensions it's also a little bit difficult to remove those bolts but it can be done this is how the flaps are looking the intake manifold it's in a good condition the flaps are in a good condition normally if you're doing this type of job you will have to replace also the intake manifold if it's going bad but in this car the intake manifold is good so i'm going to clean it and put it back in the engine as you can see those are the other parts which i already removed from the engine and those are all the parts which i removed from the car and which i cleaned very good this is the egr cooling valve this is also like new as you can see this is the bracket from the intake manifold which connect to the throttle body it's brand new i also removed the sensors and all the metal parts from inside it and cleaned them as well I also cleaned the space where the sensor will be installed and I also cleaned the sensor itself so everything is like new everything is ready to be installed back on the car and I want to tell you guys just remember in which position this metal part goes from this uh, intake manifold part just make sure you install it into the correct position because otherwise the sensor will not read properly and will not work how it should work so also this is how the intake manifold itself this is how it's looking everything is ready to go everything is brand new inside and outside i clean them as good as possible and the flaps are working perfectly everything is working as uh, they should be i didn't have to replace this part because everything is working like new So I also cleaned the EGR valve, this is how the EGR valve is looking, everything is like new, like I said earlier, and also this is how the other parts which will be mounted onto the EGR are looking. This is one metal part, this is one bracket, which also hold the vacuum pump, and this is how it's looking inside and outside. Don't forget, don't forget to put all the washers, don't forget to tight everything as it should be and in this way you'll be good to go and you won't have any problems in the future this is the metal bracket this is the pipe which goes and which connects into the engine one hole is for the coolant to pass through and one hole is for the vapors and all the pressure which goes into the EGR valve I also cleaned this pipe as you can see it's in a very good condition it's in a prestige condition like i want to say and from here i'm going to put the new throttle body on the car and i'm going to install everything as it should be and i will see if the car behaves like like it should or not
Okay, everybody, from here, I already installed the EJAR valve along with the intake manifold and along with the throttle body and all the hardware from around it. And now I want to show you guys how everything is going and where everything is going. This is the bolt which you'll have to remove and which you'll have to put back from this pipe because otherwise you won't be able to remove the EJAR valve because it's hitting in this pipe and you won't be able to remove it from the engine. Right there, I didn't uh, install the, uh, the bolt, which is holding the EGR valve mounted onto the engine. As you can see, everything is loose. And I also have one bolt right here, which is holding the EGR valve mounted onto the engine. This is also one bolt, which you'll have to put back if you want to secure the EGR valve like it should be secured. Right here is one sensor, which you'll have to install back or which you will have to disconnect if you didn't uh, remove it yet and if you're still at the removing part this is one sensor which goes right here at the top this is how the hoses are looking this is how everything is installed you have right here this little filter which goes right here in this location
Okay, everybody, so I already installed the most of the parts back on the engine. This is the EGR cooling valve, this is how it should be installed. And I also installed the pipe, which goes into the intake manifold and into the EGR. I also installed the back of the bolt, which is holding the EGR valve at the top part. And I also installed it from the bottom. And this is the fuel filter uh, bracket, which you'll have to install. You have one bolt right here. I hope you can see it. And you'll have another bolt right there in the middle. And you'll have also some bolts around it. Okay, everybody, so as you can see, I'm done with installing every part on this car. I also done with installing the EGR cooling valve and all the hoses from around it and also the fuel filter. So from here, everything is installed as it should be. And now I'm going to start the car. I'm going to put it right here. And this is the first time when I'm starting the car. I'm going to put the ignition and take it off just a few times to create some pressure. And after that, I'm going to start the car and see how the engine behaves. Just remember on this car, the DPI filter it's removed, the DPI filter was clogged out and the owner chose to remove it. I also put the new coolant back into the system and now all I have to do is to start the car and check if everything is working as it should be or not. As also, the engine did start a little bit hard, but this is only because I removed the fuel pipe which goes into the fuel rail and it took a little bit for the fuel to go back into the injectors and start the car. Don't worry about the blue fumes which came out from the engine because I also have to, re to replace the o-rings from the injectors and this is where the fumes are coming out. The injectors are leaking and I will have to do it into another video and show you guys how to do it on this car. From what I can see, everything is good from now. I will do some checks and this is how to do this job. This is how to work on this car and replace all these parts. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video and find it informative, please leave a like and a comment down below. See you guys.